Hey, what's up, guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to another Hazel devlog. So today we're going to be talking about skeletal animation, a feature that has actually been in Hazel for quite some time, but due to me kind of not maintaining it and just kind of slapping it in like a year ago and then, you know, most of the engine changing, I guess it kind of fell behind, got covered in dust, you know, no one used it for ages and I had to go back and fix it, but now it's back and it's better than ever. So I thought I would give you guys a quick little update to show you skeletal animation working and what that looks like, because I promised I would make more of these devlog update videos. One other thing that I want to quickly mention is I know a lot of you were interested in shadows. Don't worry, we're not going to completely gloss over that. I am going to dive deeper into shadows probably next week, show you guys a little bit more about how they actually work and various cool little optimization strategies and, and all the different layers of them as well. So don't worry, we are going to go back to those features. And in fact, we'll probably start covering a lot of Hazel Dev's actual features in more depth rather than being like, hey guys, look, I, I just, I have this now, surprise. Um, because obviously that's going to be a lot more useful to you guys and just seeing, seeing cool stuff, which, which is fun, but you know. Anyway, I promise this would be a quick little update. So we're just going to dive in and take a look at skeletal animation. Okay. So here is the little test scene that I put together during the live stream. I'll have both of these models linked down in the description below, by the way, these were both models just suggested to me by stream chat, literally clicked on them. They're both on Sketchfab, just downloaded them and put them into Hazel. And I'll show you what that workflow looks like in a minute as well. It's all really simple because it really is simple as in I haven't fleshed out the workflow inside Hazel just yet. This is all kind of still pretty early stuff. Now animation has been here inside Hazel for a pretty long time. Like this gun, for example, um, has I think probably almost a year old in terms of, I remember showing it back in the day, probably like last year inside Hazel Dev. So it's nothing really new, but I have um, obviously uh, refined it quite a bit. I've also, as you can see, made it work with the shadows. So you can see um, the shadows showing up over here on the cube is a good example and on the floor, obviously, and everything looks pretty good. So yeah, I don't know if there's anything really else to say. This is what what animation looks like. Um, okay, so how do we get it in here? So let's go ahead and delete the Stormtrooper. So I've selected the this, this Stormtrooper. Uh, should we get rid of the pilot? Now let's get rid of the Stormtrooper. So I'll get rid of the Stormtrooper just by deleting him. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new mesh. Under mesh, I'm just going to hit this button here. We will go ahead and navigate to the right directory. Um, and then I'll get this silly dancing FBX file. Of course, the download link for this will be in the description below. We'll import it. Um, now here he is, looks like he's like in the center of the screen here. Let's go ahead and drag him out here. Now it doesn't import with textures for some reason. I think this is just due to the path not being there. I'm not sure what it expects for the path. See, it's trying to load the, uh, yeah, it's, tr it's trying to load it from like either within the FBX or within like some, I'm not sure what it's doing there. But anyway, if you find that a model like this that has textures clearly in it. So for example, this model here. So this Stormtrooper, for example, comes with, you know, this albedo texture. It doesn't have any other textures like normals or anything like that, but it does have the albedo texture. It just couldn't load it because the path was wrong that was stored inside the FBX file. Uh, if that happens, you can just select the actual entity, go to materials. You can see that we have this uh, single material for this entire model in this case. And then you can just uh, click on albedo and then navigate to the albedo texture to load it and then just check use. And now it's using it. Now this looks a little bit wrong still because um, it's uh, like all the other, uh, like the metalness and the roughness is not correct. So he's not metal um, and he's, you could make him pretty, pretty smooth. So he's very reflective by setting the roughness to zero like this. And now you can see um, he's quite shiny and nice and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Obviously, if you were doing this properly, you'd probably want to uh, actually create your own kind of roughness map so that certain areas like these black, um, you know, fabrics weren't actually reflective because they do look like plastic in this case. So that just the white things were plastic and maybe not that reflective, maybe not that smooth. Um, but also the fun thing is you can just make it metal. Now you have like kind of like a chrome um, stormtrooper and uh, yeah. I think it looks pretty good. So that is, um, I guess, the latest and greatest inside Hazel Dev. We now have uh, animation working more or less correctly. The only thing I haven't done here is uh, picking with the mouse. So at the moment, you can't pick with the mouse. You ha actually have to select via the scene hierarchy. Um, and to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to solve this because um, obviously sometimes like these bounding boxes can be quite huge and to generate a triangle cache for all of, like for, for this entire model, um, you know, with everything else, uh, because the animations can be quite long. I'm not sure if that's going to be a very efficient way of doing things. So we'll see. I'm sure I'll come up with something. Um, or maybe I'll just try out the triangle cache method and see if that's not too much data to deal with. 
Um, but ultimately, I guess you would just need to check the current frame or something like that, but still transforming all those vertices, maybe in the future when we do it in a compute shader rather, in the, rather than in the vertex shader, everything will be a little bit better, but for now, um, that would be a little bit annoying. All right, anyway, so that is the animation stuff. Um, also, we obviously don't have any way to actually control the animations. So they just play and all of them play as well. If you have like a model that has 10 different animations in it, they will literally all play just one after the other. Um, well, depending on how you store them, I guess. So in the future, obviously we wanna be able to trigger them. We probably wanna just hold the first frame of some animation that we set up here, maybe trigger them through a script, maybe play them when we actually hit the play button or something like that. Um, but at the moment they just all play, which looks pretty cool when you're just designing a scene like this, but obviously practically if you're making a game, you don't wanna just trigger them all the time. So yeah, but baby steps, um, that's what we have so far. And I do think that this is pretty cool. Shift that light around. And just for fun, here is the same scene, but let's go ahead and change the skylight. And we will set this to be uh, pink sunrise, which is another nice kind of scene. Let's lower the intensity of the skylight as well. And maybe the directional light. There we go, that looks pretty cool. Now, one thing I think that's becoming apparent with all of these things that we're looking at is the importance of actually having a good scene. I've said this before, but an engine is obviously only as good as its assets. I could have the best like code and rendering technology behind the scenes, but if I don't have good art, it's gonna look like rubbish. These are some pretty nice assets. Now, if you have some pretty nice assets, maybe some of you watching are actual 3D artists who have like a nice portfolio of work and you wanna donate some of your assets to Hazel so that we can actually see them, maybe use them in these devlogs, that would be absolutely incredible, of course. Feel free to get in touch with me on Discord. There'll be some details in the description below. I would absolutely love to see your art and getting into Hazel. I think it would be really cool to build a scene together with art from the community instead of just my art and whatever I find online. But in general, one of the things that we are working towards and what I really wanna do when I get the chance is to actually build a nice, beautiful 3D scene because I think having something like that to show off Hazel's rendering and maybe some of the other scripting and interaction stuff that we have in the works as well is gonna be really important, obviously. So that is, that is in fact, the direction that we're heading in. So that is in fact one of our goals. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. You can help support the development of Hazel by going to patreon.com slash the churno. You guys will get access to all of this source code. You'll be able to play around with this scene and actually see all the code behind it, as well as access to all of my past backlog of live streams where I have developed most of this stuff, including the live stream where we actually jammed these animations in in the first place and saw what they looked like. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.